Hello, welcome back to Tarot Time with Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. In no way am I going to try and accuse anyone of murdering a young girl. But today is about Amber, the Amber Alert girl. Um, Amber Hagerman. Um, she went missing 26 years ago, uh, a couple days ago. And I'm going through my notes here real quick, so bear with me for a moment here because I cannot remember all of it. Here we go. There is a documentary if you want to watch, though. It's called After Amber. Uh, anyways, it only took eight minutes total to take her. It happened in the afternoon around 3.18 p.m. There was a witness, an elderly, elderly gentleman who watched the whole thing. Her brother apparently was with her. He has had survival guilt, I would say. Um, what else do I want to say here? Um, she was only dead for about for 48 hours when she was found. She was nude, sexually assaulted, and only one sock on. There's a there's something I want you to remember about that one sock sock on and being nude, and she was found in water, like a, some body of water. Uh, a lot of the water washed away evidence, but except one fiber. A lot of the evidence has been tight lipped. Uh, they do have all the DNA. They have they have a sample. They have it in storage. So that's good. Good news for all this genealogy test. I'm sure they're going to do some comparisons through the years if they get the opportunity to catch a guy if he's still alive. Uh, anyways, the mom, uh, Donna, she wanted to see her after she was found and before the autopsy, but she was so damaged she could only hold her hand. Very sad. What else? Um, there is one suspect, uh, Anon, Anana's, something like that is his name, but he got caught for a similar crime and he is in prison. I'm sure he's probably not the guy because I'm sure they tested him and there's been nothing said. So he was, he was someone, but nothing came out. So I'm going to say no to that. Uh, there's another guy by the name of William Reese, a serial killer, uh, who did a similar murder with a very similar, um, protocol i would say with the way things were done nude one sock on in a pool of water very bizarre maybe he was trying to do a copycat crime i can ask uh, but there's no direct link to him not that that totally matters but he was in texas and this did occur in texas uh let's see what else do i want to say um there's been eight thousand leads none of them has has held out um they did create a stronger laws with sex offender registry due to her and it started out with a call on the radio when they were when the mother was on the radio talking about this horrific incident a woman called in someone called in and said if we can do severe weather why can we not do kids so then it became the very first amber alert actually they would do it on the radio and then it got to be more advanced where they actually did the alert system and they also due to amber hagerman's death uh, they did the sex registry also, sex offender registry. So her loss has been hugely beneficial to other children and has saved about a thousand kids to this date. Getting a little lump in my throat. Sorry about that. It happens in these cases. I start to get a lump in my throat. Um, anyways, with the criminal, it was seemed to be a matter of opportunity because he snatched her off her bike and he didn't leave any DNA on the bike. Okay, so the system was made. It happened, like I said, 26 years ago. She was only nine years old. And they did find her four days later. Uh, her throat was cut, and he's in his mid-20s, dark hair, brown hair, six feet or sh slightly shorter, uh, and um, male. So anyways, let's find out a few questions here that I have listed. I want to know if this guy, for starters, I want to know if he's still alive. And I want to know if he's working with children because usually they'll put themselves in that situation. I also want to know if he's got a new life for himself or not. And so I'm just going to follow the trail here with my cards and see where it takes me. Um, I am going to use my pendulum as well. So here we go. Okay, so here I am. I am going to lift that up so you can see the candles. I'm so sorry. That was so boring. <laughs> no, I don't intend to be boring. Okay, here we go. So let's find out first and foremost. Um, is 
Amber Hagerman's killer still alive? Is he still alive and walking the earth plane? Amber Hagerman's killer. Is he still alive and walking the earth plane? Is he still alive? Amber Hagerman's killer. Amber Hagerman's killer. Is he still alive and walking the earth plane? Is he still alive? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, is he living a crime-free life right now? Is he living a crime-free life right now? And it's circling. That means it's clearing. Is he living a crime-free life? Maybe. Wow. Okay, so he might be doing some petty theft. Is he doing petty theft? Is he doing petty theft? Yes, he does petty theft. Has he done any killings since Amber Heard? Amber Hagerman, excuse me, Heard. <laughs> Amber Hagerman, has he done any, any more children since Amber Hagerman? Has he killed any other children? Any other children since Amber? Yes, he has. Okay. Is this man married? Is he married or is he coupled up with the with a partner? Does he have a partner? Does he have a partner? Yes, he does. Does that partner know about his past? Does that partner know about his past? Maybe. Wow. So maybe he's hinted. Hinted, but there's no certainty. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to ask what else. Um, has he done prison? Has he already spent time in prison? Has this man already spent time in prison? Has he already spent time in prison? Has he already spent time in prison? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Okay. And is he currently out and free? Is he currently out and free? Is he currently out and free? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask, is he gainfully employed? Is he gainfully employed? Does he have a job and does he go to a job daily? Does he have a job and is he a working individual? Is he a working individual? Is he a working individual? Does he work? Does he work for a living? Yes, he does. Okay, he does. So he's in a relationship. He's done time. He's probably got now, obviously. Uh, Puts himself in a position where he's near children. The partner probably has some indication that he's not so clean. And um, he's got this new life, apparently. And hiding, kind of hiding his past. So let's get some energy on Amber Hagerman's killer. Amber Hagerman's killer. Amber Hagerman's killer. Amber Hagerman's killer. I'm going to read what falls out. Here we go. And these are dual sided, so I will, when it pops up this way, this is the way it's going to be read. Okay, there we go. So this gentleman here is, he's definitely working. Yep, he knows he created a betrayal. He knows he created heartbreak, heartbreak pain, and sorrow in his lifetime. And um, a, lot of, a lot of grief. And suffering uh, everything's gray and uh, he's attempting to grow despite it because there's one little leaf right here and uh, he, they, we have like a broken rose right here a broken red rose so he doesn't have a lot of pleasure in life his pleasures pretty broken and his senses are broken so I would say he's he's um, he's emotionally detached I would say he's a bit detached from what he's done and he's, he's attempting to grow, but he hasn't done a very good job of it. I would say that. And pretty gloomy person. Dark, dark, kind of a gloomy guy. Probably suffers from a lot of depression. And he works. He hammers away daily, and he does work. And he would like to do, he would like to check out to see where he can go and grow. He would like to travel. Uh, this is uh, the Two of Wands, Upright. And with the two of wands upright, this is, you know, he has projects he likes to work on. He's got goals, new ideas he'd like to implement, things he'd like to see and do. 
I like to also call this as the global domination card, someone who'd like to go out and conquer the world. He'd like to go out and conquer the world. But I think he realized, but he knows he's got this hanging over him here. And then we've got this partnership. That, that's that partnership that came out in the pendulum. There's the partnership. But with the lovers is you can easily break up with that individual. Uh, there's a lot of, um, with the lover's card, if they're not completely satisfied with each other, uh, they could take it or leave it. There's a lot of decision, do I really want to stay with this partner or not? So I would say he's really not bonded, and he has an incapability to bond to people uh, because he's kind of checked out. He doesn't experience a lot of pleasure and growth. He can't. And so that's why his his unions, his dualities, his relationships aren't what they probably look like on the surface because he's got this hiding. He's hiding this and he would like to leave. He'd like to escape. There's this kind of escapism feeling with this two of wands here. Uh, he would like to, but he knows he's got to probably, I hate to say it, like Dexter. He's got to stay looking like a normal individual, uh, report to work, and keep a low profile. So he really can't be a, a big world global guy conquering the world. He fantasizes about it, but he can't because of who he is. He knows he's created a lot of conflict everywhere he goes. Everywhere he goes, he's a fighter. More than likely, he's probably a sociopath. Because he breaks hearts. He's not sure about the dualities he's in. He could take it or leave it, more than likely. Mostly will leave it. And would like to leave, but he doesn't. And he has to just do the ho-hum daily task of working. So he seems like, to me, this feels like someone who's not super thrilled and happy. And there's a lack of passion and growth in his life. And he knows it. And he can never grow. He can never really become this person here and really take on what he wants. I think it seems to be more of an illusion and fantasy with that moon he's holding in his, you know, that moon sitting there. And so it's, it's more of a fantasy than a reality is how I feel by looking at that card. It just really feels like a fantasy for him. And he goes in a deep fantasy and he checks out, uh, he likes to fight. He has a short temper with the five of wands. So with the five of wands, you know, there's a lot of struggles and irritation. Everything's a competition. You can't beat me. So that is very cluster B. That is very narcissistic. Uh, everybody's a competition. They get triggered easily and he's always got to be right. So he's got a personality disorder. This guy does, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt he's got a personality disorder and he's got anger issues. He's probably got a short fuse, a real short fuse. So let's get some more on this guy. Let's get some more on Amber Hagerman's killer. Amber Hagerman's killer. And he is a lion thief. That's the lion thief card. And he's not willing to open up or express any of it. Because in this position... He leaves two swords down. That's his cruelty that he, he did. And he takes the rest. So it's kind of leaving evidence behind, kind of a willingness to expose a little bit about themselves. He doesn't want to do that. We got it in the reverse position with the seven of swords in reverse. So this is someone who, he's afraid of being caught and being punished. Doesn't want to be punished. So he challenges, he, likes, he prefers the challenge of staying out. He prefers this challenge of being out in the world, fantasizing about, you know, global domination and maybe possibly even finding a new partner, taking a different crossroad here because he's looking at a kind of a crossroad, a split in the mountain. Mountains represent burdens and just leave his burdens behind him in some respect so he can grow. He'd love to do that and then actually even maybe pick a new partner. Uh, but he's got such conflicts over his lies He's afraid of being caught and being punished. Doesn't want that. Doesn't want to be caught. That's a real challenge, the idea of being caught. Uh, not something that he's comfortable with. I can't blame him. I wouldn't, if I was, if I wouldn't want that. I mean, yeah, no kidding. Doesn't want to do time. Doesn't want to eat the food. And so he also would like to have six of cups. So he would like to pretend at least, even though he knows what he's done, he likes to give the illusion of a six of cups, which is a lot of harmony, 
Uh, Six of Cups is, is someone who's developing some friendships. He's crossed over that bridge of being a liar onto a friendlier side of life, standing on the right side of things instead of the wrong side of life. Because this side of the bridge, he did some naughty things. On this side, he's trying to be Mr. Prince Charming, making friends, being cordial, being friendly. So he's trying to be that friendly neighbor, in essence. He's got a new image, a new image. Uh, is what this is feeling like for me and he knows what he used to be and where he used to be and how he was and he doesn't want people to know it he doesn't want to know it because that all that would do is bring him nothing but problems and challenges so he, he's probably wearing a social mask I would say uh, excuse my dogs there they just like to bark at the dark air out there it's there's nothing it's dark you guys it's Penelope she's a puppy so ignore them <laughs> I need, a, I need a silence room here. Okay, so with Six of Cups also, uh, the past efforts, his past efforts is starting to pay off for him now from working. So he is kind of making some steam as far as working has paid off for him. His efforts of making friends and being cordial and acting like the neighborly guy uh, is paying off. Uh, being in a neighborhood, being part of the community is paying off. So those efforts are paying off. The juice is worth the squeeze. He got the juice out of the squeeze and the effort that he had to put in to look and appear normal has paid off. So he is living amongst us and pretending to be a Mr. Nice Guy, your friendly neighbor. Let's find out more about them. And he doesn't want to look at what he's done. He wants to keep the blindfold on. He doesn't want people to know what he's done. Uh, it is gloomy. He knows it's gloomy. And he doesn't want to make any decisions. He's afraid to make decisions. So we're black, back at this sort of, this is a split here. That's kind of like almost the split of the mountains is like a, a crossroads. So is this. It's sort of a crossroad, a duality. He doesn't want to make any kind of moves or decisions. Uh, because he doesn't want to get caught. So he's sort of stagnant. He's living a very stagnant life of just work, you know, thinking about with the moon, the lies and the deception he's told in the past, the fear of the future, fear, there's fear, but he wants to grow, but he can't grow. Would love to leave his relationship or the thought of it kind of, kind of, he flirts with the idea anyways. Uh, he could take it or leave it. Uh, you know, if it suits him, he'll stay. If it doesn't, he'll leave. So back to here we go. The moon in reverse. This is someone who feels vulnerable and he doesn't want to stew in it. He doesn't want to stew in his own lies and deception and he's vulnerable and it is confession time. He knows he needs to confess, but I don't think he will. He needs to confess that he did a three of swords and cause a complete heartache, betrayal, suffering of other people. Doesn't want to admit to it, but he knows he should. He knows that's the correct thing to do, but he's trying to keep the blindfold on. He doesn't want people to see what he's done either. And he knows his option. He doesn't want to take that option because that's like, hey, you got you to gotta pick. You got to choose either right or wrong. He doesn't want to do it. He does not want to do it. So I'm going to point that down so you can see my cards. There you go. Sorry about that. There we go. Some more cards. He doesn't want justice. He knows justice will work on him. Justice will work, cause and effect. And then he would probably be found guilty. And that's confession time. Because then he, if they worked at, at this truth and justice, he's going to confess. Because he's it's weighing on him. And he's trying to keep it hidden. Yep, he is the king of pentacles with his queen of wands. So there they are. There's the couple. There's the coupling. So he's made some money. He's kind of feels re like he's a responsible individual uh, to the partner who is a, you know, a woman who is sort of uh, this wand could be, you know, she is like an Aries or something of that nature. Uh, she likes to start new things. She's ambitious. Uh, she's ver really kind of a motivated individual on her own own uh, accord, and she's not turned her back to him yet. <laughs> and uh, he tries to be reliable, a reliable source of income. Uh, that's why it's flanked here. He tries to be reliable when they go places together. He likes to be with her. 
uh, but they kind of can take it or leave it here with this. They're both kind of like, eh, you know, we're together. Kind of probably a stalemate. It's, it's, it, they're there, but that's sort of stale, I feel. Uh, and then she's kind of diagonal here. So she likes to fight. She's got a wand. They argue a lot. They, they're they very combative with each other. Uh, but he tries to get away from her and go to work. Like, I'm not going to fight with you. I'm going to work. And he tries to avoid the justice system is how that's kind of reading. And with the Queen of Wands, she feels like she's sort of the rising phoenix. She's strong. She's She's, you know, she's this woman who... Uh, can handle herself quite well. Um, she's very capable. She's She has probably children. They're typically uh, mothers. And they have a lot of energy, And but they're very strong-willed. She's a very strong-willed person. So that's why she, she's, she's, she holds her own ground with him. And if she sees something she doesn't like, she lets him know it. Hey, you're wrong here. Uh, he's like, well, I'm out of here. I'm going to work. <laughs> that's what a lot of men do. And then we have here, this here, and nurturing. Yeah, so she is a mother. She is a mother, like I was saying. She's got a lot going on. And then we have here the four of cups in reverse. Fours tend to be stagnancy, a lot of discontentment. And with this position here, with the four of cups in reverse, he's trying to take a new outlook on life, on a new outlook on being nurturing, and being and birthing new things. So this doesn't necessarily have to necessarily be acquired to her. It can also apply to him that he wants to be more nurturing. Uh, but there's this discontentment here. And he's trying to learn to be emotional, I guess. There's a stagnancy with this card, unwanted. This, this position here, uh, they're never satisfied. He's trying to be satisfied with what he has. But we do have the ship there. And so I think, and it's in the background. And that ship usually signifies, you know, it's a good time to leave. So I think he knows deep down that he has to be happy with whatever he has in his lifetime right now because of what he's done and trying to hide it and living with a mask, social mask and trying to blend in that any point in time, he might have to flee. He might have to burst something new and literally flee and flee her. Uh, and that's probably why it's flanked here with the two with the lover's position because if things get too hot in the kitchen uh, with this here hot with him and and there's literally no potential for growth with her, I, I gotta go. I gotta leave. They're 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 getting too close to to finding me out, figuring me out. I'm leaving. So he's always feeling like um, he might have to leave at any point in time because he's he's a wanted fugitive in essence. And then he would have to start life all over again and birth something new in order to feel abundant. It would be a whole do-over. And he does not want to get caught. Does not want to get caught. And then he would have to start a whole new, with a new community, build new friendships again, cross over the bridge, build a new community, get into a new community, pull the whole, I'm a normal guy. I'm just your average Joe below here. So he's trying to fit in, trying to blend in and lay low and just put his head down into work, literally. So he pro he's probably not super financially abundant. It might be uh, kind of financially struggling here. So I've got the uh, burden. There's a burden here that he's carrying. And there's that past of himself he's trying to leave behind. He doesn't want to look at that person that he used to be because it's a huge burden on his back. And he knows it. And then he also knows that the Knight of Swords in reverse, excuse me, no, Page of Swords in reverse. He used to be a player. He used to be a hardcore player. What he did happened fast. Uh, and he's afraid that people are going to, detectives and people are going to come after him and look at him. He's keeping an eye on the case to see who is watching him. Because this, this sword energy these swords energies are good at investigating and spying. So he keeps an eye on to see who's spying on him. Uh, and to him, that feels sort of cruel, the kind of victim mindset after he did it. But it's a very defensive stance. He's being very defensive. He's very defensive and burdened by what he did. He's afraid of them capturing him. Capturing him. Here we go. Here's the capture. This would be them getting him. And uh, he would have to 
confessed. He would have to confess. And we have the Hierophant in reverse. And he knows he is not full of duties and morals. He is immoral, sinful, horrible person, no spiritual connection. So let's get, we have the top of the deck here I have is the loss of a loved one. Somebody lost their family. Someone lost a loved one here. At the bottom of the deck, he's, he's just a workaholic. I think he just works. He suffers from low finances. They're not super abundant, and he's just a workaholic to stay looking normal, and he's still anguished over it. And then we have that lantern there, and the lantern is the truth. And he, as you can see, he doesn't want to look at the truth of himself. He doesn't want to see the truth. He keeps his head down low. He doesn't want to draw a lot of attention to himself. So this guy's kind of probably pretending to be just kind of a friendly but kind of an introverted guy. So he's not super, he's not an extrovert. I would say he's more of an introvert, uh, trying to keep low. I, he's got to stay kind of low, low key. He's afraid of failure, losing, and then them capturing him. This would be them capturing him. And the orange here with this, this card here, orange represents difficult challenges. You know, he's trying to get, that would be a difficult challenge if they busted him and caught him. So he's, he's sticking here with this red, trying to be, he feels somewhat passionate and, and energetic uh, and enthusiastic, the fact he's gotten away with it. He knows he's gotten away with it. There's that victory reef there, uh, but there's always going to be a storm warning that could come and get him at any point in time. And then we have that yellow there, and that, that is his consciousness. His conscious is, is affecting him. His conscious is constantly knocking on him constantly with the gloomy days that he has created. He created a lot of emotional storms and that consciousness does knock at him. And so that red, the red, red is about pleasure and senses also. And he did it. He did sexually assault her and he was able to get some pleasure from it. And he doesn't want to think about it. He literally does not want to think about it. It, 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 it freaks him out. It kind of freaks him out about who he truly is because he's tried to leave it behind. So just move the camera for you. And he's not in control of himself. He has these urges still. It is the emperor in reverse. He's got control issues. And he's trying to control the fact he's got control issues. He's not building a life for himself. He's doing, he's just a workaholic who hasn't done a very good job of building his life. But he fantasizes about that world domination and really growing and expanding and leaving and being able to be a free individual. But he's truly in his own personal prison is what this is saying. Really is. And he's, he's an inflexible dominator. He's got control issues with this emperor in reverse. So that is like the dad, that's like a daddy dearest in reverse. Okay. So he is a dark, he, he can turn like that. Uh, he probably acts real pleasant and then he gets very dominating uh, and she calls him out on it. No, you're not going to tell me what to do. Boom. We got a challenge on our hands. We're going to, we're going to fight it out. Uh, and then they both think about, oh, should I leave you? Should I leave you? I'm not sure this is a good uh, a good pairing here. So they probably might be stuck out of finances because they're not super financially abundant uh, because it's not on the table here. And they're kind of like probably workaholics here. And he's, yeah, it's just um, kind of a, kind of a, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I'll keep my mouth shut on it. <laughs> and here we go. And he knows he has he is not the rising phoenix. His back is turned to the rising phoenix. He has not risen up from the ashes that he created. Uh, he's hopeful. He's pointing the stars there. He would like to. He'd like to be a businessman. He'd like to start things for himself and be ambitious and motivated, but he can't because he's not the rising phoenix. He's got something weighing over him, and he knows it. And so there's that purple robe. He's he's got kind. Of, no, that's actually kind of a brown robe. Yeah, so the brown, brown represents, uh, what is brown? Uh, everyday tasks. He's involved in just everyday tasks. My life is so boring. I got to keep my back to this situation too. I can be hopeful for a better future, but I got to just do these everyday tasks. And nothing really great has happened for him in life. So he has not become like a major success. He's just a ho-hum ho person. 
you know, that Knight of Wands, that, excuse me, that Page of Wands in reverse. And then we also have here the Eight of Cups here, the Eight of Cups in the um, reverse position. He does not have any hope for anything. This is sort of wishing upon a star, feeling sad, feeling hopeful but sad, and wishing for things. There's a lot of jealousy. He's a very jealous individual. He really wishes he can do something with his life, but he's not going to be able to because we have it in reverse. And once again, he's got to leave his emotions behind. He doesn't want to think about what he's done and turn his back to it and go do his daily tasks. So it sounds kind of like, I'm just going to say, it sounds like Dexter. It sounds like Dexter, uh, that new series of Dexter, where Dexter's just living a normal life and trying to blend in and doesn't have much excitement because he can't. He cannot really be a true individual. This is a prison of his own making here. It really is. Very gloomy life. And then we have here also, we have here the, yeah, we have a king of swords here. And so he knows that life can be cut out at any point in time. And he knows that with the king of swords in reverse, that he has zero integrity and he's very abusive energy. He doesn't want people to see the side of him, um, you know, because he's not calm. He's not self-assured. He's not about justice and truth. He's not a powerful ruler. He's got no, no, he's got no leadership skills. He's not, he's just staying quiet. It's quiet and cruel and, and just staying kind of introverted, I think. Because he knows who he is. He knows he's sort of this monster in hiding among people. And he's still alive and he's still working and he's got a partner. And that's what it's looking like. So, yeah, interesting. Maybe if you guys are interested, I can keep going into this. But I don't think he's going to get caught. I think he's just going to be one of those people that gets away with it forever. Did I, did I ask it? I don't know. But I'm going to ask it real quick here. Will this gentleman, will this guy be caught? Will Amber Hagerman's killer be caught? Will he be caught? Will he ever be caught? Will he ever be arrested and convicted? No. No. Will he die? Will he die being free? Will he die being free? Just a working, hardworking citizen of society? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoy this. Till next time, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.